and because especially you're saying you don't know what's going to happen on Tuesday. I think Governor Palin was a surprise uh, to everybody. Um, and I guess at first it was good for comedy, uh, which I always support. Uh, anything that happens, you know, that give us a laugh or two during hard times, difficult times. But um, I think it's pretty much uh, understood now that while she'll bring out a, a lot of people uh, to vote uh, for John McCain, uh, if, uh, if he loses on Tuesday, uh, uh, she'll be considered one of the main reasons why he lost because people in the middle uh, just had a hard time thinking about voting for her, but um, but I don't I don't think I don't think I mean I you know what I've said to people and I live up here in northern Michigan so I live in an area that voted three to one for Bush um, in the 2000 election and uh, you know and I have neighbors and people like that up here they you know they're Republicans they that's the only thing they know that's the way they've always voted and and I and what I've said to them is. Okay, I don't want to discuss, you know, Governor Palin's, you know, politics or what she believes in or whatever with you. I just want to, let me just ask you this question. You know, you, you've only known her for like seven weeks. Would you turn the keys to your house over to somebody that if you're going away on a trip to somebody you've known for only seven weeks? Would you turn your children over to, for, to someone that you've known for seven weeks? And if you love your country, why would you turn your country over uh, to someone that you've known for seven weeks? It makes absolutely no sense to me. Just on that level, no matter whether you agree with her or disagree with her, it's just you don't know her. And you really, it's way too dangerous. Uh, statistically, and not that I want this to happen. I mean, I hope John McCain lives a long life. But, uh, you know, statistically, you, you know, uh, that may not happen. And we're you're going in the booth and you're, you're potentially voting for President Palin, and you have to ask yourself that. You know, how do you feel about that? I, mean, I I'm hoping sensible people will say, I just I can't handle that. Governor Palin has uh, been along with McCain, the one who has been pushing this whole issue of Obama being a socialist. And I want to ask you about that, Governor Palin, who comes from Alaska, where people are all given money, to wealth redistributed from the most powerful corporations, perhaps on Earth, like Exxon Mobil. Well, um, <laughs> yes. I mean, there's great there's great irony in that. Um, and of course, again, it seems like people like Governor Palin, a lot of Republicans, wealthy people, they're all for the idea of what they perceive to be socialism, uh, if, if it means uh, if that it's good for them. Uh, but, uh, and at the same time, attacking Barack Obama for, um, you know, but I think he put it best uh, uh, the other day when he was talking about, yes, it's true that he shared his toys with other kids in kindergarten. and. And he might have once shared a peanut butter sandwich in fourth grade uh, with another kid. So he does have these socialistic, communistic tendencies. Uh, I, you know, the, the only redistribution of wealth that's happened uh, has been uh, distributing more of the wealth to the wealthy, especially in the last month or so. Um, and they, they're, they're, they're great in their Orwellian attempts at trying to turn it around and, and use that word at somebody else. But, um, but you know, may, Amy, maybe the good thing about this is is that, that you know, we've heard the word socialism used more than we've ha heard it used in, you know, decades almost. So maybe, this, maybe that's a good thing. It gets people looking it up in, on, in Wikipedia or something. <laughs> they start to think about, they start reading about, hey, you know, that, that's not a bad idea there. Um, Taking care of everybody, making sure everybody's uh, cared for. Uh, uh, so, uh, also, I think that the dangerous thing that the Republicans have done is by making, trying to make this election a referendum on would you vote for a socialist? And if the majority of Americans end up voting for Obama on Tuesday, uh, haven't they essentially said uh, that actually they like the idea of, of socialism? I mean, that's the, that's the, that's the paradigm that the Republicans essentially have established with this, with the way that they've uh, presented this whole issue. So, so I, I guess uh, if Obama's president, when we wake up on Wednesday morning, 
um, you know, we should all go dance around the May Day poll. And your thoughts on this being the most expensive presidential campaign in history with Obama opting out of campaign finance? Well, you know, yeah, one, one good thing that Obama could do as soon as he takes office is, is to say, you know, that sucked what we just went through and what I did, what I participated in, even though it was mostly from small, you know, small donations. Um, you know, it, it, uh, this isn't the way we should be doing this. And uh, I would love it if he would just propose a, a plan to remove money uh, from politics and to do what, what just virtually every other Western democracy does, which is to get the money out of politics to a large extent, to have a shortened campaign season, and uh, to uh, make everyone automatically a registered voter simply by the fact that you're a citizen of the country, you're automatically registered at that moment. So if you were born here, like in Canada, essentially your birth certificate uh, is your voter registration card and you're registered at, at Elections Canada. Uh, you know, when you're born, uh, they have that all in their data, their data file and it's, it's just there. Um, and we need to go to a paper ballot. We need to go back to the best way to vote, a pencil and a paper. And then the paper ballots are counted in each precinct with observers from each party present uh, as they count the ballots. And we need to support third, fourth, and fifth parties so that all voices are heard uh, in this country. They need to be at the debates. I, I watched the Canadian debate on C-SPAN. Uh, they had five political parties there. Uh, they all got equal time. And um, uh, they all think that that's a good idea because it's important in a democracy that all voices be heard. So I, I would love to see a number of reforms uh, as far as our electoral system. It is so crazy. So many people are going to have so many problems on Tuesday. Uh, they're going to show up. They're going to find out their name isn't on the rolls. Or, or they're going to go in the booth and get confused again. Um, uh, you know, in some states, you can vote a straight party ticket, but you can't vote for individual candidates. The state I live in, you can vote a straight party ticket and vote for individual candidates, and the ballot is good. In other states, I think it's North Carolina, uh, you, you, can, you can vote a straight party ticket, but you also have to vote for the individual presidential candidate. And if you don't, your straight party uh, thing that you touched doesn't count for the president. I mean, there's just so many crazy rules in 50 different states we're one country. There should be one way to do this. The Canadians have the ballots counted within an hour. They're just pieces of paper. They count them all. And I mean, it's a big country. It's, a, they, I mean, they, it's the second largest landmass in the world. They're bringing you know, their ballots in by canoe and dog sled and baby seal. I don't know, however they get them there. But you know, I mean, they, within an hour, they know who their prime minister is going to be. Uh, so we, we really have to correct this, all of the, all the, whole, the whole shebang here of our electoral process. You talked about Canada. What about these third-party candidates? You supported Nader in 2000. There's Bob Barr right now, as well as Nader. There's Cynthia McKinney. Are you encouraging them all to run as hard as they can, even in these last few days and with the stakes the well, way they are? Yes, I think it's good that, yes, I think there's, it's good that there are, are different people running. But in this election, uh, you know, I'm, I'm voting for Barack Obama. And uh, it's, it's uh, uh, you know, we don't have the proper setup uh, to where these other parties have a chance. They should have a chance. We should have a different system so that people uh, could have their, have their voice heard. And people who want to vote for these candidates uh, have a chance to legitimately do that and have a legitimate, uh, some form of representation or proportional representation where their voices are heard in Congress. I mean, that just seems to make common sense, doesn't it, to anybody who be really believes in democracy, that if 10% if, uh, of the country, uh, uh, you know, supported the Green Party, that 10% of our Congress should be uh, Green Party members. Uh, if 10% were libertarian, then 10% should be libertarian, or, or whatever the percentages are. Um, but, uh, but in this election, uh, you know, it, it's it's... Uh, we're all too beaten down at this point uh, to take it any, any longer, and we have to stop uh, what the Republicans have done to this country uh, for the last 20 of the 28 years. I don't think there's many of us that are under any sort of delusion that uh, Barack Obama and Joe Biden are going to take us all the way to the promised land. Uh, but they are going to stop. They're the tourniquet that's going to stop the bleeding.
Academy Award winning filmmaker and author Michael Moore. We're going to go back to our conversation after break. If you'd like a copy of today's show, you can go to our website at democracynow.org. And we're going to be broadcasting live for five hours on election night. You can ask your station, radio or television station. You can go to our website at Democracy Now. There will be video and audio uh, live streaming. More details at the end of the show. After break, back more with Michael Moore. Stay with us.